So this is the Carter AVS carburetor. It was on Chrysler cars for three or four years. It's an air valve secondary. It's supposed to be better than the AFB. So uh, rather than replace it, uh, we're going to try and rebuild it. Uh, you can find the number of the carb on here. This one, what does it say? 4741. And with that, you can get the carb kit. There's the carb kit for rebuilding. And we'll get started. Alright, so we'll take that little arm off we'll as take well. Take that little arm out of there. And how, how it was in there. How, yeah, so okay, that, so we yeah. can see that. It's easy. Because yeah. that's got to go back in the same place. Mm -hmm. So I guess now we can uh, turn it around and we can uh, bottom the uh, idle screws. Zoom in. Right, ready? Yep, so we're going to do the uh, idle screws, so we'll turn them in and count how many turns to get in, or half turns. Until they bottom until out. Until they bottom, so that we will be able to put them back in, in the same position, and it'll be roughly tuned when we get it back on the car. So we're counting half turns. So we're counting half turns. One. Four and a little bit. So why would one be six? I think that could have been our, one of our problems. That's probably why the car wasn't running right. Yeah, it's idling too, too hard on two rivers on the one side. Right. And they're and they're uneven. Yeah, they're uneven. That's another yeah, problem. By a, by a full turn or more. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll take that and we'll put that one away and we'll move on to the next step. And the next step will be to remove these screws and caps for the uh, metering rods and metering pistons. And we've got our, our uh, Unbraco Allen keys, which I don't think you can get anymore, but I'm happy to have them. Pretty tight. Okay, so it has a lot of pressure on that spring, huh? Yeah. Oops. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I can't see. Yeah. Trying to keep it from... That's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. This is the one thing that's different from the AFB, is that there's a dome on that cap. They're really... Ooh, and there's a spring. There's a spring, yeah, they're really gross looking. That's too much varnish. I wonder. Show the show the camera here. Okay. Yeah, so there's a little cotter pin. I don't suppose you can take it off without blocking the camera. It's not a cotter pin. It's a spring. It's a spring. Yeah. Okay. Well, go ahead and take it off. And... The next step will be to remove the top of the carb. This is one of the reasons why this carb was a favorite of of uh, racers because on the drag strip. You can you've got you've got eight stainless steel socket head cap screws, which are very tight. Right socket, now. which are very tight. So, well, we know what to, what to expect when we're putting it back on. Mm -hmm. So you can take off these eight 
hex socket head cap screws and you can remove the whole top of the carb without without taking it off of the uh, without taking it off the manifold and it can be uh, rejetted and new metering rods put in there on the drag strip so that was a popular feature stuff so now I guess we uh, well we can pull it we can lift the top off we have to separate it it might mm -hmm. be tricky all right so. so we're gonna try and get the top off oh wow that was easy <laughs> that was easier than we thought <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh now, it, now we've got gas here uh, gasoline in here yeah so that's the pump yep. okay okay just looking at the uh, at the top of the carb, there's the uh, float bowls on the sides. Uh, accelerator pump is here, and if you look at an AFB, there's there's some kind of venturis on this on this end, and there's mm -hmm. nothing of the sort. Uh, the whole flap, yeah, the whole flap system. It's the, yeah, the, it it's completely different from the AFB. So there's we're we're in uncharted territory here. So. Hopefully, uh, what we find out, we'll be able to, we'll be able to help you guys to uh, do your own carb. <laughs> okay, and then the other thing we're looking at here, this is the, uh, the accelerator pump. There's gasoline in there, mm -hmm. so that spring might there might be a replacement in that kit. All right, so next step, we're gonna take the floats off and take the. Uh, Take the. Uh, These are just what do you call them? Those little valves in there. The, uh, okay, so is that the soldered float? One of them. This one looks soldered, but they're all but they, soldered. They, what, no, oh, no, there's, there's the repair. Yeah. There you can see. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, there's the repair that was done by a mechanic, maybe 30 years ago, and he said, "Yeah, after this, you better go get a." You better go get a new float so you can see how much of a hurry I was in to get a new float because it's been more or less working ever since maybe you all can see it now can focus so that's the uh, needle valve the rubbery or Teflon or whatever is going to still seal okay. so now we got to take the yeah. the seat out of there or whatever that is yeah it's a seat and this is too small so do we have a bigger Light. Okay. As I understand it, these are in there pretty tight, and that is still too small. Uh, okay. So, it looks like we didn't do anything, but actually we searched for a screwdriver big enough to take this thing off. Of course, we didn't have one, so we improvised. Vice grips and a piece of steel that's out of a, out of a junction box or something for electrical. But it's got a thick piece of steel, and we put it on here. And while while you were doing nothing, we loosened that baby off. You want to do loosen the other one so they yep. can see. It's actually actually we've got to oh, pull yeah. that needle so valve out of there. See a needle valve and in here. We were worried that okay, it's going to be super tight. Well, the first one sure as hell wasn't. <laughs> That was really loose. Yeah. yeah, so so it wasn't tight at all. And uh, before we put this back together, I have to buy a bigger screwdriver. This one's stuck. So, yeah, there we go. Oh, and there's a washer on here that goes. Yeah. So I think there's captive, a new washer in the in the package. washer. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That was 
not. Yeah. Okay, so it's not tight. It's not tight. No. So. Okay. Which is a good thing. Did I? It was on there, right? Yep. It's all on there. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, we're back. Uh, we're gonna take the uh, gasket off of the the top of the carburetor. We made a made a little uh, spudger out of an old credit card. Sharpened the edge so that it doesn't scratch doesn't scratch the carb surface. Is it working? to be lifting off now. Okay, there we go. And now it's just going to be... Well, you know what? There's uh, there's that uh, gold handle tool that for... Uh, oh, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, that one. We don't want to... That's the tool for taking the... Uh, cell phone apart. I don't want to damage it. Just clean up a little bit and then after this it goes outside and we'll, we'll hit it with all the chemistry. All right, so that's it for, or should we take, there's a filter in there, no? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think there is. Let's take that apart. Pause that. All right. All right, so we found a wrench that fits. Hold that down. Do you want to come around? Yeah. And I'll put a couple of hands on here. There, there it goes. Okay. filter in there. Maybe there should be. Yeah. Nothing in there. We don't want, we don't have one with the kit, so we're relying on our inline. Yep. Well, it always did. We've cleaned this thing a bit, and now we're going to take the Venturi's off. Uh, it doesn't smell like gasoline anymore. So I would keep those separate so that we can keep it with the Venturi. So it, mm -hmm. it's going to be the same as the other side, though. Yeah, so we'll just... Um, they were hitting it with a screwdriver in the other video. They were lever it, levering it. Levering I think it? you could lever in here. Okay. Maybe a smaller screwdriver. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's moving. Didn't take much. Mm -hmm. Took the gasket with it. 
Well, that's good. Okay. Well, you could almost reuse that gasket. Yeah. But we won't. Yeah. Not, not in bad shape. Yep. So they're not that tight. Mm -hmm. Completely blocking the view. rock it a tiny bit mm -hmm. and that time it left the left the gasket in there mm -hmm. Hmm. it'll be easier than the other video okay. mm -hmm. so that wasn't so bad mm -hmm. and then there's this one and whatever that is, is it this one Oh, there's that one too, so, and then this. Mm -hmm. Those don't appear to be in any description. These are coming off pretty easy. Not that tight. Oh, it just comes off. Yeah, so it came free. Yeah. There's, there's this gasket, so. See, that's damaged yeah. quite a bit. Good for changing it. Mm -hmm. so a little carb cleaner will get the rest. Next <coughs> is this one. already loose. Wow, that's not, that's not very <laughs> tight. <laughs> Maybe the gasket has gotten thin. It's yeah. to... They shrink. Here, I'll do it so I can see it. Yeah, it's already on. Wait. Oops, so we can see the shape of the of the gasket. Do we have one of these? Yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah, we have that one. Okay. Okay. So I guess that's it. Now it's ready for the serious cleaning. We got to take the jets out because. Oh yeah, we got to take the jets out. Okay. So let's go for the jets. Mm -hmm. You can see. And I think we can just arrange them in the ice cube tray in the position we took them out of. Just so we yeah, can... that's a that's a challenge, isn't it? We should we should take notes on it mm -hmm. because they they're different. There's different sizes. So draw like a diagram, right? Let's draw the draw the thing here. Where do we have a pen? Here's a pen. I'm gonna draw. Yeah, the only way to do it is to draw it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Float bowl. There's one on the angle here. Let's see what I'm doing. No, no, why, no, it's, it's there. And then the other float bowl on this side. And in here. There's jets. And in here there's jets. So what is it? There's five five jets. So we'll take them out one at a time and then we'll mark where they came from. Mm -hmm.
Okay, that worked. Okay, so that wasn't so difficult. Mm -hmm. I think the last one wasn't removed during the last rebuild. Probably Based not. on the filth on it. This one we have a number for, and that is uh, 20, and 692. Okay. Okay. Alright, okay. so three more. This one I can maybe use the bigger screwdriver. Yeah, fits. Hmm. Okay. Really tight. We had a look at it, and you can actually see if you put it in the light, there's a check ball in there. So that's our check ball. There's no replacement check ball. And if you flip it around, you can, you can see, see that it's spring. got some brass that has been bent over to hold the check ball in place. So all we can do is clean that and hope that it still works. There is a spring behind there, too. Is there a spring? Yeah. Well, we can't touch any of it because we don't have replacement for it. So uh -huh. we're going to just clean it and put it back in. Yeah. Okay, so the last thing is there's another weight and the check in ball there. in there. So we're going to turn the thing gently upside down, and we sure as heck don't want to have that thing fall out in the wrong place. Okay, it's not coming out. It's not coming out? No. Can you see a check ball in there? I see the weight. Okay, so we're going to try using a pointy scriber, the most useful tool in the toolbox. And let's, we're going to just see, and it, it's moving in there, so either this is, has uh, jarred it loose, or it was always loose and it's stuck some other way, so I'm going to have to flip it over and see what happens. Oh, guess what? It's a little needle. Oh, it's a needle. Little, little needle. No, no ball? I don't, see, wouldn't I don't see a ball. So this one has to go back in. It's, uh, it's like uh, solid brass. You can zoom in a bit. It's a solid brass. You know what? We got to look that different. So anyway, that's so that's a little a little needle valve in there. And fortunately, just a little bit of a little bit of uh, almost just touching it with the scriber got that sucker out. So. Try and look inside. Yeah, there's nothing else in there. Okay, so we're gonna do an extra step that nobody else is gonna do, but uh, we're gonna put uh, evapo rust 
in a container. That's probably enough. Well, we should show them that a label of the evapor rust. Evapor rust. That's the uh, that's the miracle stuff. So we're gonna put all the all the steel parts that we've taken off of there that are all rusty, and we're gonna pop those in and uh, and have them clean when they come out. Now the uh, we took the spring off of one of the idle screws. The other idle screw we'll put in with the spring on it, so, and we've written down the the right one. Looking from the front has the spring removed so we'll be able to keep track because we'll have to probably not going to make a difference because we're going to have to make a new adjustment anyway and this stuff is super safe so super safe touch it you can touch it you don't need to wear gloves and uh, Well, we can put that washer in there, right? Mm -hmm. that little screw. All right, and then we'll... Normally, you're going to put it for a few hours. We're probably going to leave it overnight. Okay, so we're uh, back at the uh, evapo rust. I'll take a look how it uh, how it worked. As you can see, it's uh, removed all of the rust. So there we have it. Now we're going to run the evapo rust through a um, coffee filter to remove all the all the other gunk that came off the parts. And they all look beautiful. Starting to put this thing back together now. It's all been cleaned out and it's uh, dried off and off gas so we could bring it back inside from the cold. And we need our gaskets. Is that, uh, that's that one. Yeah, that's that one. Yeah, that's good. That's okay. Yeah, that's the device. 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 If there's torque settings on these, 
didn't see them in the directions, did you? Nope. Strip them and back them off a quarter turn. Mm -hmm. So then there's these ones, and we've got them divided left and right, but this is the back. This is the back, yeah, right? So we should turn it around. So now we got left and right. Actually, you can look and see, are they the same, or are they... also not fit in the wrong way mm -hmm. even if you want yeah to. you can see the way that oh you can see the, the way the passage is, goes yeah. so the passage has got to match up with that little slot although it doesn't on this side yeah it does yeah this this oh, passage oh, it does, ends yeah. up yeah. yeah okay so that's the that's the order they go in all right These, of course, have uh, been cleaned over the last couple days. All the passages are clear. So we and, just sprayed carb cleaner through there and, uh, and, and there, compressed air. And there was a passage on one of them that was completely plugged, that we had to, we had to force something through it. So that's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. It definitely was due for, for a rebuild. these rubber things off. I don't know how we're going to do that. We try prying them up. Just let's make sure that... Oh, you can get your fingernail underneath it. These are the right things, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, they fit loose on there. Okay, there it comes just with the fingernail. Okay. These ones are rounded. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's just contouring to... Maybe it wore out. With yeah. So this is the replacement? Yeah. Yeah, that fits on pretty... Yeah, that's pretty, just about right. Pretty loosely on there. Yeah. But I guess uh, when the top goes on, that's going to create a seal. Okay, so that's all the all the Venturi units snug down so uh, next we could put the idle screws back in yeah uh, which one is the one that has the spring on it still check here. right idle screw spring removed okay so this is the left which is actually from the car point of view it's actually the Right one, yeah. but <laughs> we're going from front on view. So we'll bottom it. What was the the back off on them? Um, oh, they're left four four half turns. And the other one was six and a half. That's probably way too much. Yeah. Oh, four and a half half turns. Yeah. Oh, so that's bottoming. 
That's bottom. Okay. So back it off. I would back it off four turns. Four turns, yeah. Or do both of them four and a half, four, four half turns. Four half turns, yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. That should be spot on for. Well, it's going to be as near as never. It makes no never mind. All right, then the other one is here. Hopefully that works. All right. Well, at least they're the same. Yeah. So we can replace this. Oh yeah. Uh, but where does that speed? Right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Before we forget. Yeah. And we measured that one, so we can do it to a depth. Yeah. Stop screw. Yeah. Point point seven one. Okay. So. So we're going to put it on the same, measure it the same way we measured it before, and we're, we're a full turn, 100 thou. There it is, right on. on. Okay, so next we put back put back the jets. Okay, so we we'll pull out the three ninety twos. They're the they're the shortest ones. Now putting it in probably with tweezers. This one, you you go backwards until it until it clicks. Is this, that that's a right size one? Screwdriver. Could use a bit of a bigger one here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nope. So this is the right one. So. Can't really tighten them more. No, just, so that's it. Stops, yeah. So that's it. It was yeah. they weren't that tight. They were when you cracked them, it just was a tiny little bop. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll do the other one. Alright, so that's the jets. Okay, so this is the uh, new accelerator pump. What's interesting, you know, let's show them the old one because look, it dried up. It was brown when it came out, and so the original one was pink too. And once it dried up, it turned pink again. So, what we have to do is we have to soak this in gasoline, kerosene, or oil. Um, I think we need to soak it in oil because. We don't have any kerosene, and I don't want to bring gasoline inside the shop again because it's going to stink the whole place up. 
Okay, so uh, poured some scotch. I poured some scotch. I decided I'm not going to use WD-40. We're going to we're going to soak it in scotch. I mean motor oil. So so what 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 oil do we have there? We have uh, Penn's oil 5W30. So that's the third. That's the, the thinnest oil we have. Nice winter oil. So I don't know how long we'll let it soak, but we'll let it soak for a few minutes anyway. Okay, so we let it soak for a couple minutes. Get it out of here. Get some of the excess off of it now. Careful not to any debris into it. Okay, so then it says to pull it out a little bit. clear what that means but pull it out a bit okay so I guess I guess that's it then don't know how good it is to have a bunch of oil in there but that's the instructions Make a little blue smoke when we first start it. So it'll, it'll uh, dis dissolve in with the gas. So we can put this spring back in. So there it is. So I th think that's it until we can uh, until we can put the top on it. And we can't do that because we're waiting on a pair of new floats that we've ordered and we've got to pick them up at car belt tomorrow and then we'll be able to we'll be able to put the top back on and finish the reassembly okay so we've got the top in here and we're gonna put the uh, there's uh, there, <laughs> there the, the instructions show a fuel filter in there and there wasn't any and I don't even know where we're gonna get one Never had one, so we're just gonna reinstall as it was. We're gonna before. reinstall it as it was. We've got to put the new. There was a gasket there for it, so we put the gasket in, and uh, we'll just have to make sure we have a a good filter in the in the fuel line. So next, we'll move on to that spring for the air valve. Got that retainer there, put back in. Now we read the instructions wrong, and which may be why it was too tight. So, uh, So this time we're going to do it, it says to tighten the spring until, just until it starts, it Is starts, on side? It, I'm not sure, no, I think it, uh, I think it goes on the bottom that way. But doesn't it, uh, yeah, I think it goes all the way around because we're turning it. way to tighten it. Mm -hmm. So that's in the right position. Are those holes exactly the same on the two sides? Yeah. Okay. So there's two notches, which is where you get your screwdriver in there as well, but it also holds the it holds the little tab on the on the spring. There it is. Now the instructions are to uh, move it until it starts to until it starts to move the air valve up. Oh, 
we got to move the choke out of the way. So from there, there, yeah. So it was what was it? Two, two turns. Two turns, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We we figure for nineteen sixty eight. Yeah, uh, yeah. It gives you different <laughs> measurements, but uh, it's going on a nineteen sixty eight engine, and so we don't know what the carb was on originally. Uh, it could have been on a seventy one, but it's a sixty eight engine, so it's it's based on the engine, not on the. Half turn or that was one turn, wasn't it? I don't remember. There it starts. It's kind of. If you well, it's kind of there. See, that starts to lift. So, there. Okay. So that's where we're starting. So. So that's a half, half turn. turn. Another half turn. One and a half. Two turns. Okay. It's not even it's not, not even closing. It's sticking. It's sticking again. I think it's because I'm pushing. It's because you're pushing on it. So okay. you're holding that. Mm -hmm. Okay. There. Now it's behaving normally. Now it's behaving right. It's not rubbing on anything. So that's the setting. Yeah. And the spring is clean. We uh, not only cleaned it off, but we soaked it overnight in in uh, evapo rust. First cleaner, and then evapo rust. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a like a completely new spring now. It's uh, and it's just beautiful. So it moves perfectly. So from here, the next step is to do the is to do the floats. Yeah. And so we can put the seats in, and then we're then we're done. We can put the. Uh, yeah, so it comes with some kind of of clips, but there were no clips on the uh, on it before, and the instructions don't show any clips at all. So that yeah. probably is a that's probably a kit. It's probably for the AFB or something, and it uses the same seats, but it needs those clips. So in this case, we're not using the clips, but I think we're... yeah, when we put the floats on. Okay, so. so. in there straight. I think I got it now. Yeah. That's it. And I think we okay, need... Okay, so we've modified our super fancy tool. And uh, we'll use that to tighten. They weren't that tight, so I'll just snug it in there. That should be good. Should be all right. Okay. Scissors. I already opened it. Oh. About as far as we can go. Okay, so then next is the uh, is the floats. We're going to be setting up the floats. We bought a pair of new floats, these uh, Edelbrock 1469 that are supposed to be replacement floats. They uh, they look somewhat similar, but there's a couple of differences. When we compare with the old float, you see it's a little bit shorter. Now the problem is uh, the width is the same. And it's only how many? The one gram lighter. One gram lighter. It's Eleven than grams this one. for the new one, and twelve for the old. So we're hoping that's not going to make much difference. The dimensions are, or the measurements are made to 
part of the curve so it's always you're never going to get the right part of the curve exactly so i don't think they're expecting it to be too perfect so we're going to assume that uh, it's not going to make that much difference having one gram difference but one problem is the size this new one is a lot smaller in height and the measurements when you're when you're putting this thing on uh, you're taking the measurement from from the gasket to the to the basically the top of the float um, because this is upside down so basically you're measuring from what's going to be a way above the fuel up in the air and what you really need is the dimension to here which is which is the the bottom of the float when this is flipped over and that's what's floating that's what's floating in the gasoline and giving you the right level so had to do some calculations and you can see over here we got a few went wrong then eventually we got better ones and in the end you might not have to do the calculation but we figured out what the gap is at the bottom based on the new size so we have new measurements so for leveling the float I set this one up to our new measurement which is 0.428 uh, instead of whatever they had 330 seconds and then the hang is adjusted to 0.9875 so it took the trouble to figure that out and I set up these gauges um, so it makes it easy for us to, to to set it up to measure it's a whole lot easier than using this paper thing they give you with the kit yeah uh, and I've seen I've seen videos where they show using the paper thing so you know you're not dealing with like really precision stuff just got to make sure the the fuel is not overflowing and and not going too low that uh, it won't feed enough into so, the, into the carburetor i imagine there's a fair bit of range that you can be off by yeah but maybe i'm wrong well if there was if it was going to be more precise they'd have had a better system to measure it yeah so we have a problem I didn't put the gasket on there. <laughs> okay, there's one other thing that's different about the new float from the old one. You can see the tab that we're going to be adjusting. This one, it goes over the shaft. It's got, it goes over the shaft, whereas this one bends down uh, underneath the shaft. But I already put it on there, and it looks like it's going to be working. It's adjustable and, and will fit. Uh, just seems this one's a little bit better designed so let's put it on there screw I don't know it's, it's pretty close it's pretty close I think that's pretty good I think that's as good as we'd get it with anything else so shall we do the hang then yeah let's see how that goes Pretty close, but uh, it's come up a little bit. Yeah. So how do we do that? Okay, so a little bit of futzing and fiddling. Uh, I think we pretty much have our hang height. 
out we have our, our level so that's one and then we'll do the other My first adjustment worked perfectly. It's like spot on. Well, there we are. So we got our floats adjusted. Okay, so we're ready to put the top back on the main part of the carburetor. Okay, so I guess next we put in the uh, we put in the metering rods. I had it the other. Okay, I'll just. Okay, so this is that magic spring trick. Spring might not be in there. Okay, I got my thumb on it. The 
This is a lever arm for the accelerator pump. That's the first thing we're going to do. Look for an AFB that will give you a brand new cover or an old new rod. Snug that. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we got to get this this linkage on. So first, Okay, we got any other linkages? I think that's it. Well, there's two, two more pins. Okay, so we're just looking at this thing, and we're looking at the old photos, and what we've got here is, this is an, uh, an idle adjustment, it's a fast idle adjustment. There should be a linkage going up here, so when when the choke is is closed for starting it pulls it pulls this lever up and underneath there's a cam and that cam leaves you a faster idle when it's when it's warming up and then as you release the choke it reduces the idle until it goes to normal idle. In modern cars, this is uh, done by an air idle air idle control valve. Yeah, but when I'm starting this thing, when it's cold, it I've got to hold. I got to hold my foot on the throttle. Mm -hmm. This so this, would... this would do it for me, and it's missing that link. It was never there. We were looking at the pictures before we took it off the car, and there was no link there. And there's an adjustment for it, so it goes between here and here. And there's an adjustment for it on the instructions. That shows the exact thing. So you to adjust bend choke rod. So the choke rod is missing, but I can see what it looks like, and I can look up the adjustment, and I'm gonna have to manufacture my own because that's a feature I want, and somebody obviously left it off, probably deliberately, because they didn't like it. But I've never had it, and I always had bad idle when it's when when you've got the choke on. And always a pain in the ass starting. So this might make a big, big difference. And I was going to use double uh, snap rings, but I don't really have room for the double, so I cut them off. And uh, so that's going to fit in this one. And this one fits in that one. So 
it works. So you pull the throttle back, you close the choke, and it puts it onto the, the little idle cam. So then when you take the choke back, then it will drop out. So I think that's the last thing. The from here it goes back on the car.